to the International News Channel. I am your host, Olivia Price Digby. The world is shocked at the news of human rights activist Karima Baloch's suspicious death in Toronto. Karima Mehra Baloch, a Pakistani human rights activist who fled Pakistan to Canada in 2015, was found dead in the waters of Lake Ontario, Toronto Police revealed on December 22, 2020. Karima disappeared near Lake Ontario on Sunday, December 20th, and the 37-year-old activist's body was found near Toronto's downtown waterfront on Monday, December 21st. Karima Baloch was a critic of human rights abuses in Pakistan and a supporter of independence of Balochistan from Pakistan. Karima Baloch's family and friends believe there is enough evidence to suggest she was a victim of criminal activity and that her death could have occurred as a result of Pakistan's intelligence agency, ISI, which was hostile towards her political activity. Friends of Karima Baloch staged a protest on December 24th outside Toronto Police headquarters to demand Toronto Police's further investigation into Karima's suspicious death. The Friends of Karima Baloch Committee, led by journalist Tarek Fatah, petitioned in an open letter to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Ontario Premier Doug Ford, and Toronto Mayor John Tory, writing that the decision to label her death as non-criminal and thus a suicide is carelessness and deeply disrespectful of the 37-year-old woman who fled Pakistan to seek asylum and safety in Canada, but instead ended up dead. It is well known that Karima Baloch received many death threats and that her family members and friends had been abducted and murdered in Pakistan-occupied Balochistan. In fact, over 20,000 Baloch citizens have disappeared or been killed over the past 20 years. Amnesty International has called for a thorough investigation into Karima Baloch's suspicious death. She was strong-spirited and determined to show the world the human rights atrocities carried out in Balochistan by the Pakistan military, some of which as officers have now retired and moved to Canada. Political assassinations are not acceptable and will never be acceptable on Canadian soil. The Baloch diaspora has publicly stated that Karima was critical of Pakistan's intelligence agency, ISI, which is notorious for abducting and torturing human rights activists inside and outside Pakistan. Sajid Hussein, a Baloch journalist, was found dead in a river outside Stockholm this past May. The similarity of the circumstances between both cases is uncanny. Canadian Member of Parliament and former Cabinet Minister Michael Chong expressed serious concern over Karima's death and insinuated that the Pakistani spy agencies were engaged in carrying out political assassinations in Canada. Chong tweeted, Karima Baloch, a Pakistani dissident in Toronto, was found dead, the second this year. A thorough investigation is needed to ensure no foul play was involved. Very disturbing if political assassinations are taking place on Canadian soil. Other Canadian political figures such as Bob Ray and Chris Alexander have also been vocal about the suspicious circumstances surrounding Baloch's death. I am joined today with British Orientalist Burzine Vogmar. Uh, he's joining us from London and he is an independent expert in South Asian affairs and is affiliated with the European Foundation of South Asian Studies and the University of London School of Oriental and African Studies. Welcome Mr. Vogmar. Thank you for having me Olivia. So I want to just jump straight into it. Uh, Karima's situation has been labeled uh, suspicious, and I'm wondering what you see as suspicious in Karima's death. Well, for a start, uh, that the late Karima Baluch's corpse was found uh, ostensibly near Lake Ontario, 48 hours after her disappearance on the 20th of December. The body was uh, retrieved, so we are given to understand by Toronto police authorities on the 22nd. Now, there is a pattern to it and a very disquieting one at that. Because a few months ago, in March 2020, Sajid Hussain, another Baloch human rights activist and lecturer in Iranian languages at Uppsala University, Sweden, was also found dead in near similar circumstances. Uh, what do I mean by that? Mr. Hussein went, disappeared, went absconding on 2nd March, and that is to say in the town of Uppsala, where he was teaching, Baluchi at the university there, 
the only center in the world incidentally where baluch language and literature is taught the only western varsity for that matter and his corpse was fished out of a river north of Uppsala on 23rd April. I mean, it's a crumb of comfort for Karima Baloch's family, if we can put it that way, that she was discovered 48 hours on. But Mr. Hussein was found uh, a month on, and it took some effort for the Swedish authorities to identify him, as you can imagine. Be grouped. On first sight, that may seem supposedly acceptable, because they have ruled out foul play. But then the dots don't necessarily add up, given that both had gone voluntarily into exile from Pakistan since their activities were deemed anti-national and they were deemed a threat to the deep state and to Pakistani authorities at large. And why was that so? Well, in Karima Baloch's case for speaking out on gender inequality and the human rights uh, situation in Balochistan, which is Pakistan's largest most impoverished province and least populated that too. 43% of Pakistan is made up of Balochistan. And it's on all social parameters, it lags behind the rest of the country. It is dirt poor, to put it coarsely uh, as such. And uh, there has been a systematic campaign undertaken by uh, state elements, deep state elements, to um, liquidate any and every Baloch voice, and this has been happening on the domestic front, uh, where Karima Baloch herself has pointed out at human, United Nations Human Rights Council uh, proceedings, where she has been invited to deliver her deliberations, and that she has seen those of the Baloch human rights movement being systematically disappeared. And what do I mean again by that? Well, we find their cadavers strewn across Pakistan a month or so later, and police authorities, um, when contacted by distraught relatives, uh, have nothing to say. They're completely stonewalled. And, and the said cadavers in question are found in a rather gruesome state with more than evident uh, uh, signs of torture with mutilation involved, as has been pointed out independently by the Pakistan Human Rights Commission. So this is not being done by, say, partisan Baloch elements, though they have, uh, of course, also documented this. For example, the voice of Balochistan has documented since 2014, there have been about 14,800 plus disappearances of Baloches. And what do I mean again by that? Well, the Baloch intellectual class of students, journalists, teachers, activists and the like, because they consider thinking Baloches, because they considered dissenters, the state has particularly targeted them, the Pakistani deep state. Absolutely. I think I think it's really key to point out just the, like, uh, I don't know, the quantifiable numbers of people who have gone missing in various circumstances and how closely Karima was related to them. Um, there has been another narrative uh, given to us, which is, um, by the Toronto police and other Canadian of authorities that they are suggesting that Karima's death was a suicide. Is there a, like, is it possible to rule that out, do you think? I think that would be an insult to anyone's intelligence. And I should be the first to point that out to the RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, as well as to the Toronto police authorities locally, Metropolitan Ontario, and also, might I add, to CSIS, Canadian Secret Intelligence Service who at some point, I'm afraid, will have to be roped into this. Which brings me to my second point. Uh, that is to say that we have a systematic pattern of Pakistani behavior on the Baloch front of liquidating and decimating Baloches domestically, nationally, mm -hmm. as to, well, whatever Pakistan wishes to do, it can do uh, supposedly on its home turf. But now the inter-services intelligence the Pakistani External Intelligence Agency and elements of the military and others in the deep state cabal have gone not just rogue, but gone international. And Olivia, you will know this only too well with what has happened with Iranian intelligence activities in Canada, Absolutely. which has which led to Prime Minister Stephen Harper uh, discontinuing diplomatic relations. And there is no Iranian embassy in Ottawa now for the last five plus years. Prime Minister Harper was a uh, pretty strong on that and principled on that. It is time Prime Minister Trudeau took a leaf from the Conservatives and did this and pointed out to Pakistan that this is simply not on.
you cannot have such activities activities conducted on our soil and as a fellow commonwealth member we expect you to uh, not come up short but to make a clean breast of it Absolutely. again prime minister trudeau was very adamant um, olivia if you remember a year or two ago with the um, ukrainian airlines crash it was canada which first announced that the canadian intelligence to its credit along with other western intelligence agencies pointed out that it was an iranian missile which took down that civilian aircraft on which iranian canadians were passengers why is the administration in ottawa so quiet about this to date with pakistan given that canada does have leverage with pakistan and well there are iranian canadians in uh, across canada and i'm sure the authorities would have considered uh, that when it came to their relations with tehran but that did not prevent them from speaking their mind and taking a no nonsense approach so why this double standard with islamabad why doesn't ottawa speak about it we've seen nothing officially come out from ottawa on this count not even the pakistani high commissioner in ottawa has mm -hmm. been called into the foreign ministry for an explication on this absolutely uh, it's been and, it has and been you may say or those in defense would say that these are simple speculations and sensationalist ones on my part well but absence of evidence is not evidence of absence and again uh, to uh, reiterate that Pakistani intelligence has taken a leaf from Iranian intelligence mm -hmm. in targeting their own dissidents abroad now which has happened in Canada, Germany and elsewhere and the EU has come down very strongly on Tehran for that and Canada of course uh, we all popularly consider as quite high minded and principled uh, and conducting a principled foreign policy as such but uh, it is uh, incumbent upon prime minister trudeau to um, state something about that Uh, which has and uh, nothing of the sort has been done from 22nd december uh, since she was discovered to date 4th january 2021 as we speak on air absolutely and uh i mean the silence has been very loud to say the least but uh i'm wondering if you if you expect more from the canadian government than just uh speaking on this if there's like active things that uh they should be doing that you recommend to um I don't know in, ensure that our Canadian soil is in fact sovereign and not being impeded upon by other nations. Well as I pointed out why hasn't the Pakistani high commissioner in Ottawa been called in to afford an explanation on this? Uh, nothing was done by the Swedish authorities with the Pakistani ambassador in Stockholm. So there is a pattern setting in and I dare say this that if Pakistan decides or the powers that be there and decide that they can get away with this scot free it has set a precedent for such uh, acts of Absolutely. decimating a uh, decimating so called enemies of pakistan abroad and it won't just stop at pakistanis who is to say that pakistan's um, custodians may not target say their traditional enemies elsewhere for example what about indian or afghan diplomats are they also a uh, ripe for open season at some point if they are outspoken or if pakistan decides that they need to be eliminated is canada going to be quiet on that or other western authorities now you may say i'm jumping one too many bridges but there is a pattern to it because indian diplomats have been targeted in england in the 1980s and then they were kidnapped in one instance mm -hmm. uh, in birmingham to be precise and their body was discovered a few months later decapitated and it was traced back to uh, kashmiri activists who were aided and abetted by pakistan but at several removes so that pakistan couldn't be implicated in the same so there is a pattern and i mm -hmm. dare say it will kick in if nothing is said i mean silence on ottawa's part is simply not an option particularly with the dispensation we have currently of prime minister trudeau who makes one too many noises about principled opposition and um well high minded policies so why is he not prepared as he has been prepared to speak on iran why not on pakistan i'm wondering what you think the international community can do both in response to karima balochi's death association internationally speaking on balochistan and the repression that has occurred there uh, and that reminds me of uh, another salient feature which is hitherto overlooked questions of balochistan's sovereignty and accession to pakistan as a uh, commonwealth state go back to 1948 it's as long as kashmir but kashmir does capture the sound waves uh, there is 
more than adequate bandwidth to discuss Kashmir and what happens in Indian Kashmir. But we see nothing of the sort on a similar basis with Pakistan's Balochistan province. Mm -hmm. And of course, to a certain extent with Iran's Balochistan province, because the namesake province straddles both republics, Iran and Pakistan. Just as Azerbaijan is part of a sovereign state of Azerbaijan, but there is also uh, what used to be Soviet Azerbaijan, for instance, but also part of northern Iran. It spills over. Right. So, and of course, Baluchis there also do get a raw deal as Sunnis in what is a predominantly Shia dispensation, uh, the Iranian Islamic Republic. Mm -hmm. But that's another matter for another day to discuss. What is happening in Pakistan's Baluchistan is, uh, in a word, atrocious. Uh, that is to say, as I mentioned, uh, cadavers stuffed with human feces, cigarette butt holes, decapitated or quartered uh, parts of the body found uh, by relatives. And mm -hmm. it takes an effort for them to um, identify the said individuals who have, say, disappeared a few months earlier on. But the international community has maintained a studied silence on it for the simple reason that Pakistan uh, projects itself as a non-NATO ally on the so-called war on terror where, of course, its contribution has been uh, extremely questionable, to say the least, particularly after Osama bin Laden's discovery in May 2011 there. Mm -hmm. But, um, and of course, uh, this is known to all, uh, one and all, but of course, they have chosen uh, tactfully to overlook it in order to maintain some leverage with Pakistan and for uh, intelligence sharing and the like because of implications uh, in their own host countries with terrorism emanating from Pakistan, as we do know has happened only uh, once too frequently. But again, that is no reason for um, a trade-off to not uh, haul in Pakistan on this and for the Trudeau administration to um, turn a Nelson's eye to the entire issue. Well, thank you very much for your commentary, and it was lovely to have you on the show. That was Mr. Berzine Vogmar coming to us from London. Thank you. Goodbye. I am joined today with Tarek Fata, who, as we mentioned earlier uh, on this broadcast, is leading the Friends for Karima Baloch Committee. And so um, you wrote an open letter to the Prime Minister of Canada and Premier Doug Ford, Mayor of Toronto, John Tory, and uh, you were calling for Karima's death to not be considered a suicide. Uh, why do you think that Karima's death is not a suicide? Well, I, uh, there was absolutely no indication, no reason for her or for anyone to go uh, commit suicide and then buy a ferry ticket and walk down four miles down to a pier, leave her uh, bag uh, on the tier and then obviously jump into the water if she had to commit suicide. There are many ways to commit suicide. Uh, and for whatever reason, nobody goes to a tourist spot uh, and buys a ticket to go there when there's ample places over here. And then there was no reason for her to commit suicide. She had her entire life ahead of us, uh, ahead of her. Uh, she was doing wonderfully well. She was one of the very few uh, Baloch women who have ever come up and spoken on the international forum about uh, what's happening uh, to her homeland. And uh, she was very courageous in confronting even the Pakistani military officers who retire and then are given r residential status and citizenship in, in Canada. And she had warned at one time that uh, Canada will regret to see this. So all we are asking is that the body would you believe nobody has seen her body? We don't know about uh, any procedures or any uh, thing that the medical uh, field has performed on her. Nobody has, the family has not been shown who she is. So uh, there are a lot of questions that need to be answered. And uh, somehow I believe that the Canadian authorities and especially the mayor and the police chief have shrugged her death off as if, um, you know, it was uh, of no consequence. Absolutely. Thousands of people have come out, demonstrated, uh, right up to in Bangladesh. I, I, I was surprised to see that at Dhaka University there were people protesting. There have been 
demonstrations and processions in Pakistan, tens of thousands, and where she will be known in Balochistan as a national hero forever. Absolutely. And he, here, it seems they couldn't care less. You suspect that, that Pakistani intelligence was involved in uh, Karima's death in some way. And I'm wondering, do you think that this is something Canadians need to be concerned about for uh, future cases? Is, is Karima's case uh, a stand alone or, or could it occur again on Canadian soil? Canadians have seen uh, the, the biggest terrorism, act of terrorism on their soil with Canadians dying. And yet it seems they were not the type of Canadians that would shock the country. I'm talking of the Air India crash. Mm -hmm. I'm talking of a situation where right in the House of Commons, there is a Khalistani caucus and there is a Muslim caucus uh, among the Liberal Party. And uh, their concerns are uh, very different than the concerns of ordinary Canadians. Yet they represent vote banks, which... Uh, I think uh, all three parties are equally uh, guilty of catering to. So uh, what we are saying is you cannot rule out mischief or assassination, considering that she was being hunted uh, down uh, in Balochistan when she first came here in 2015. And then when she wanted to go through the exercise of getting her landed papers, we feel that there were a number of Pakistanis within the Canadian establishment, within the Canadian uh, po police and security agencies, who wanted to make sure that she never got her uh, landed papers. It, I think it took her five years to get it. And usually it is an ordinary case. Yeah. She was targeted as if she was a terrorist. Mm -hmm. And I can assure you there's enough infiltration of Pakistanis within the police establishment. I've got death threats in while I was in hospital. And while the cops were uh, looking into this, a Pakistani gentleman comes up and asks them to leave. It turns out he's the head of intelligence. Mm -hmm. I don't expect uh, someone uh, whose ancestry is Pakistan within the Toronto police to, it frightens me, in fact, because they come from a culture where police is supposed to be an instrument of uh, dictatorships. The Toronto police have um, clearly not been uh, adequate in investigating this case so far. Um, I imagine it is difficult to know exactly the reasons behind all of that. But you don't tell us anything. Yeah. I've, asked, I've, I've sent inquiries. What are you waiting for? By any religious standards, her body should have been given back to her family. There, after three days, there is a, uh, uh, there should be some respect for what uh, we consider our daughters, that they should not be lying down there somewhere. Uh, just imagine if this was uh, John Tory's daughter or uh, 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 Trudeau's sister or someone. You think this would have happened, that nobody that the husband or the brother would not know where the dead uh, uh, woman is? I mean, you're exactly right. The, the silence on this case has been speaking so much. It's been a, a, a trend through this entire story that we've been following. Um, what do you think the Toronto police can do beyond, um, you know, paying Karima the respect that she deserves in terms of where her body um, is? What do you think they can do to continue a thorough investigation and ensure that she really does receive the justice that she deserves? She, they, should, they could have talked to the community. Are they, perhaps they are uh, not acquainted with the international world, perhaps they don't know where we come from, or are they blind or deaf to the issue that tens of thousands of people are marching halfway across the world? Uh, that the demonstrations have taken place outside the Canadian Embassy in Washington, in Paris, in, in, in Germany, in, uh, in, in, in Texas. Mm. Uh, is nobody listening or do they just consider us a bunch of riffraff that comes to the embassy doors and uh, let them get out of the way? We, are we not 
uh, sexy enough to be considered worth uh, uh, to lis- uh, be listened to? No, not a single person. Imagine the mayor, the chief of police, nobody has responded in any way. Yeah. A dead woman in their city doesn't mm-hmm. count for anything. They are more concerned about uh, Rod Phillip going somewhere on a vacation. Oh my God, that's serious. But the losing of a life means nothing. Mm-hmm. And that is really troublesome. It tells you a lot about um, uh, uh, how we should really believe who we are considered I- I- in the city. We sometimes feel that, yes, we are, but it's all, uh, you know, in, in, on paper. Nobody considers, uh, uh, you know, uh, a karima to be worth uh, mm-hmm. a moment of prayer or tragedy or and nothing, absolutely. What do you expect to see from Prime Minister uh, Justin Trudeau and the Premier of Ontario, Doug Ford? What, what can the Canadian authorities do to make up, first of all, for the lack of silence and, um, and to ensure that something like this doesn't happen again? They could simply acknowledge the fact that a woman died under their watch. Mm-hmm. She escaped death to get life in Canada, and Canada offered her death. At least the feminists should have spoken. Where are the, uh, uh, you know, our Margaret Atwood, and where are all those people who at every, you know, Greta gets more attention uh, turning 18. Mm-hmm. Because she goes around the world in multi-million dollar boats. And this child of ours is dead. And nobody cares. This, bo- this addresses another issue, which is that are we, when we offer someone asylum in this country, do we really do it because we as a society respect that person or respect the issue of human rights or freedom of speech or simply because we have to check out certain squares at uh, in some NGO at some United Nation funded body say oh yes we did this 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 multiculturalism anti-racism black lives matter Mm -hmm. check 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 we're done for the day now let's go have a party it's almost like the real lives of real people are getting lost in the bureaucracy, which is... Um, it it, it is. Yeah. And for a woman to come alone out of an occupied territory where there's a war going on, come to Canada. Thank goodness for uh, Chris Alexander, the then Minister of Citizenship, who helped her arrive here. But, but after that, the government changed and they made help for her by investigating her as if she was the terrorist. Uh, Mr. Fata, thank you so much for that beautiful tribute uh, of Karima. It was very moving and uh, we hope the best for you and the friends of Karima Balach Committee as you keep persevering through this. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Canada is home to many refugees. If a thorough investigation into Karima Balach's mysterious death is not conducted, Canada will no longer be perceived as a haven for multitude of refugees who seek safety on our soil. Thank you for watching the International News Channel with Olivia Price Digby.